You can make a great film featuring Venom. For a start, make him the villain. Now make it a horror. Now imagine it's a body horror flick. One where a director like, say, David Cronenberg creates a twisted, painful looking, slimy takeover of a human recipient somewhat similar to the transformation scene from The Fly or John Landis's An American Werewolf in London. Make the central conflict of this character's story his despairing descent into crime, violence, murder and madness as he slowly loses control. And when the fall is complete, have the rest of the film say a protagonist, <coughs> such as Spider-Man, <coughs> take on this skulking evil force of nature in a movie with a creepy, oppressive atmosphere similarly framed as something like Ridley Scott's take on the original Alien film, with Venom being the terrifying monster feeding from the shadows. This movie is not that movie. However, that said, what this movie is, is goofy as hell, and I kinda love it. Alright, look, Venom is weird. I would personally argue brilliantly weird. I know what people are saying about this thing, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I genuinely, sincerely had a great time watching it. Like many others, I had wrote this film off before it even came out. I know that sounds harsh, but can you really blame me? Every single tiny little bit of news to come out of this thing made it sound like it was going to be just awful. There was the whole thing about the director wanting to push for the hard R rating while Sony pushed for PG-13, Tom Hardy saying all of his favourite bits of the film were left on the cutting room floor, the multiple attempts to take this character into a standalone film failing to get any momentum going all the way back to 2007, weak trailers, sketchy clips, and, well, this fucking line. Like a and all of that is before you even consider the absolute bonkers concept of the whole thing and how it even sounds on paper. I distinctly remember a moment years back when me and a mate were told by another friend that Sony had announced they intended to make a Venom standalone movie without Spider-Man where Venom would be the main character and we both in tandem went, uh, why? Maybe it's just me, but that as a decision doesn't make sense. I'm probably going to upset a lot of people when I say this because I know what comic fans are like and no one enjoys having their favourite character torn apart, but gotta be honest, Venom kinda sucks. Don't get me wrong, I do love him. I've got a great deal of nostalgia for the dude, he was always my favourite growing up. But you know what other character was one of my favourites growing up? This guy. Venom is to Spider-Man what Shadow the Hedgehog is to Sonic, a palette swapped edgier and more sinister redesign of a popular icon with a bit of a gritty angry boy backstory that made 13 year olds wet their pants with excitement because of how proper hard and cool and violent and badass he was. Not having a go, I myself was one of those 13 year olds, even though really the only exposure I'd had to the guy back then was as a playable character in Marvel vs Capcom on Dreamcast. I was completely infatuated. I mean, look at him. He comes from that inherently 90s style of character art, the Todd McFarlane slash Rob Liefeld school of edginess, harsh blacks, big builds, angry expressions and lots of teeth. He's a zeitgeist character that just captured a popular look of the time perfectly as opposed to a dude with any real substance. I'm sorry if he's your fave, I'm not here to rain on anyone's parade, that's just my stance on the fella and if yours is different that's fine. Don't get me wrong, he definitely fills a role, but it's a very specific role and that's as the cool one. An awesome design that looks intimidating and scary and works as a villain. There's a reason though that Sam Raimi didn't want to add him in the original Spider-Man movie trilogy saying that he had no humanity and even his bloody creator thought that Venom wouldn't work as a central character. He works great in a lot of ways opposite Spider-Man as the antithesis of everything that character represents. He's a good foe as just this overwhelming force of nature for a protagonist to overcome, he's a great illustration, a fun as hell video game avatar, an awesome action figure, but he's kind of a crappy protagonist. It's only with age I realised that all of my appreciation of this dude literally just came from the fact that he looked sick as fuck. As I grew up and got more into comics and read more and more of his appearances though, I realised there's sort of nothing to him. Violent alien attaches to angry dude to make angry violent alien dude. 
that's kind of it. I know that since his original appearance, Marvel have done a fair bit to flesh the character out. Uh, yeah, his current run with the character Flash Thompson as the Venom Spider is pretty great, for example. But that's not what this movie was promising. From the start, it was always intended to be the edgy Eddie Brock OG, so without a Spider-Man to bounce off of, and with all the production problems, the weak marketing, and this ill-conceived concept, this was shaping up to be a complete disaster. And I guess for a lot of people, it was. I just surprisingly am not one of those people. This is not the Venom movie I expected, nor is it the one that anyone wanted, but fuck me if I didn't have a good time. This film is batshit insane. So in a fairly mundane and inoffensive opener, we are introduced to Eddie Brock, portrayed by Tom Hardy, a super cool investigative journalist with his own network show who spends much of the first act riding motorcycles, shagging his fiance, and looking handsome as fuck in a leather jacket. Dude's like the ultimate fantasy of a guy who's got everything going for him. However, eventually he investigates the wrong people by looking into the shady practices of billionaire Carlton Drake, portrayed by Riz Ahmed, who in his pursuit of quote-unquote bettering mankind, maybe left a few skeletons in the closet along the way, in the forms of the literal skeletons of test subjects. Once Carlton clicks on that Eddie is investigating him, he quickly uses his power to ruin Eddie's life robbing him of his job, his home, and his fiance. It's a somewhat plodding but totally serviceable setup to Eddie's motivations that made me wonder what all the fuss was about and had me expecting a very middle of the road, totally serviceable, okay film. But once the title of Venom hits the scene, oh my god, it becomes so much more than that. So as you probably assume at some point in the movie, after a series of events that I won't spoil, Eddie does become infected with an alien symbiote, which is to say this weird, gross, sentient, phlegm-looking thing that uses his body as a host and gives him lots of powers, thus creating the iconic anti-hero-slash-villain Venom. What you probably didn't assume, though, was the totally goofy, weird-ass way this film would handle that idea. Very, very minor spoiler here, so if you don't want that, then turn off the video. But to give you a hint of what I mean, I will say there is literally a scene in which Tom Hardy actually makes out with the alien, but like, a sexy version of that alien. With like, slime boobs. It's wonderful. Now I'm not saying this is my favourite gay love story since Brokeback Mountain. I'm just saying there's a little touch of it there, you know? I mean, if I pitched you an idea for a movie where two lonely disenfranchised men from completely different worlds find an unexpected admiration for each other and that in spite of their totally unique cultures and ideologies and the occasional love as tiff, they manage to make each other better people and spiritually form something of a whole new entity, while also at one point play a rather passionate game of tonsil tennis that leads to one dude being inside the other dude, you'd probably think, that sounds like a charming gay love story. Well, it's also the central narrative of Venom. Not joking, that's kinda how it plays out. The arc of these two characters is them coming to terms with essentially being roommates in the same home. The home just happens to be Tom Hardy's body, and finding a best buddy's bond with each other, often with couple-style arguments creating much of the film's comedy, including a running gag where the Venom symbiote goes in a sulk because Eddie keeps referring to him as a parasite, and things like little quarrels about what they're gonna have for supper that night. And you know what? Fuck it. Like, I totally understand why this would rub people the wrong way. It's weird, it's completely unexpected, it's wacky as hell, but I love this dynamic. It's super silly, it's fun, and it did make me laugh a fair amount. I don't know if that was because my expectations were so low for this thing, or because the way the character development played out was completely out of left field, but I had the time of my life watching it. Like, say whatever you want about this movie, you can knock it a great deal on a good amount of things, but if nothing else, it sure as hell isn't boring. It helps that Tom Hardy is giving a million ten percent with a performance that chews more scenery than Venom chews head. It's like he's playing Jack Sparrow portrayed by Nicolas Cage turned up to eleven. He's twitchy, he's manic, he's rambly, he kinda squints a lot and I'm really not sure why. Basically, he does anything he can except resemble something close to a real human being and it's odd and unusual and kind of alienating, no pun intended, but I think he might have totally made the right call with that because if he'd played it any more serious, he could have killed off any of the offbeat enjoyment that could be had here. I can definitely see why people are calling this one a misfire. I don't think anyone who's saying that they dislike this is jumping on the hate bandwagon as some might accuse them of. 
There really is a great deal wrong with it. I can see why the performances might rub people the wrong way. The pacing is completely off with the film being really heavily front loaded with about half an hour's worth of lingering nothingness before you even get the slightest hint of any of the things you came here to see. The PG-13 rating is kind of an issue. While it isn't a problem for me at all and I don't think added violence would have saved anything, I can see why fans of the character might feel a little betrayed in not getting something more true to the sometimes violent nature of the source material. The tone is completely completely all over the place. In one scene you'll go from a gag where the Venom symbiote is literally calling Eddie a pussy for not jumping out of the window, to the very next moment seeing him murder an entire SWAT team. The final act comes very suddenly with character arcs, especially Venoms, seeming to make huge leaps and changes without any of the steps to really earn getting them there, and then suddenly everyone is swept into a final fight that is really quite messy in the CGI department, with a bumbling, awkward to watch battle between two indistinguishable snot monsters that at times is so hard to follow, it looks like you're watching a slow motion oil spill as opposed to the climax of a superhero movie. I get it. I get the hate. It's totally understandable. But for me, this just something infinitely watchable about the whole thing. It's got this unintentional magnetism to it. I'm not even sure it's one of those so bad it's good kind of things. I mean, there's definitely a lot of elements of that. You know, did I really need to see stuff like a man climb into a fish tank and chew through a live lobster while mugging for the camera? Or a sexy boobied slime monster lick Tom Hardy's throat? Probably not. Those kind of things fall under that so bad it's good camp. But in amongst the messy entertainment of it all, it has some genuinely redeemable qualities. Aside from pacing issues, it does flow pretty smoothly, like it all makes sense, which is a bigger deal than you might think considering all the alleged massive cuts and studio interference. The villain, while massively cliched with the whole evil scientist thing, is entertaining to watch and really well performed. The action scenes, with the exception of the occasional ropey CG and the rushed third act, do actually work and can be a great deal of fun, and my appreciation of the Eddie Venom dynamic I described isn't an ironic one. I genuinely liked it. I thought it was great and really loved the weird as hell acting that Tom Hardy had to pull off to make the whole shtick work. Hell, it's so offbeat that by the time the now infamous turd in the wind line came around that I have admittedly been taking the piss out of ever since the trailer dropped, I actually had to eat a humble pie and admit for me totally worked in the context of Hardy's whole performance. I feel like I'm going to lose almost all credibility for this, but I don't know what to tell you. It tickled my pickle. I had a blast. You might think it's terrible. I can totally see why someone would. It's an entirely fair assessment, but I would be lying if I said I didn't spend the majority of its runtime with a wild smile on my face. It's a weird movie made by committee where you can literally feel the missteps, bad decisions, franchise desperation and studio interference emanating from the screen for almost every second it's on. But for me, it's got this unusual something to it. Something I can't quite put my finger on. Some strange, unexpected and likely unintentional charm that just totally floated my boat. Is it a good movie? Uh, not sure about that, but it's definitely an entertaining one. I'll likely watch this again. It might even be something I buy on home release to put on at movie nights with friends. For me, it's kind of good in the same way the clunky 90s Attitude Era wrestling was good where you could get some genuinely great moments mixed into the same show where elderly women would give birth to hands, or porn stars would be circumcised via samurai swords wielded by angry Japanese men, or an undead zombie biker would confess of he and his fire monster brother's love for vaginas. There ain't but one kind of pie Kane and I both eat. Kane loves pie. Poontang. It's a fascinating car crash of the redeemable and the irredeemable, blended into silly, goofy, comic booky daftness, and I'm all for it. End of the day, I came out of that film, and amongst all of the little bits of good and the lots of bad, amongst all the weird strangeness and the safe comedy, amongst all the conventional action fights and the unconventional oddness, my biggest takeaway was this. I had fun.